Hello, beautiful soul. Welcome to my podcast or my YouTube channel. I'm Will coming out of the multidimensional guide and I'm here to help you awaken, heal and expand your consciousness. In today's episode, I am so excited to bring one of my dearest friends, my soul sister, Simone Niles. And we had an amazing conversation. Simone is an expert coach. She's a sound healer, a vocalist, an author, and she offers grounded and practical teachings focused on empowering conscious, soul-driven creatives and entrepreneurs to generate meaning and alignment in their work and life. She is also training the next generation of sound healers and shamanic practitioners to create an even greater impact in healing and transformation. Simone's gift in using sound has touched many, myself included, through her healing, teaching, and performing for more than two decades. And we talked a lot about sound, sound healing, frequency, vibration, intention, how sound heals instruments or voice. She focuses on sound healing through the voice. And so we also talked about the difference between that and and having bowls or, or instruments. And it was just an overall a very loving um, conversation filled with love because we love each other. So I hope that you feel the love and you enjoy this conversation. And if you do, please subscribe to my channel or my podcast. And if you feel like this conversation will help a friend, please share this episode with them. Enjoy the show. Hi, Simone. Thank you for being here on the show. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for having me. Long time coming, right? Finally, we're here. Thank you for having me. Fine timing. And I am so, so, so excited to have you. I'm usually excited to do the podcast, but today even more because yeah. you are my dear friend, my soul sister. <laughs> so this is very, very special. I usually as well. I usually start um, my interviews asking about um, one's spiritual awakening, but actually, I want to do something a little bit different today um, sure. because okay. we're going to talk about sound and voice. Um, and so, I'd love for you to share with us. A snapshot because I know it's a it's a there's a lot to share but your voice journey or your journey through your voice in mm. finding your voice exploring your voice from that little girl that grew up in Barbados yeah I want to think singing some R&B from the 90s you know right yes <laughs> um, R&B fans <laughs> um, through you know becoming a professional and and the sound healer that you are today yes i mean journey through voice i think that is is a beautiful frame because i think when i talk about my journey journey generally it tends to lean that way anyway so i yeah i knew from the age of seven that i wanted to be a singer or sound was a big part of my my journey from that young and unlike a lot of children or people as we're growing up i never wavered from that so it felt very strong like a calling something i was here to do i didn't you know change it at 10 and say oh actually i want to be a police police woman or actually i want to go out there and do this i knew i wanted to Sing, and I pursued it from that young. I was always singing. Fortunately, I came from a musical family. My mom used to sing and kind of songwrite. My dad used to sing, and you know, they, we had a guitar in the house, a piano in the house. My siblings, we all did piano. So I had that environment that was really supportive of me singing. I went through my schooling um, days, primary school, even in secondary school. Uh, we would carpool 
And after a while, we were known as the singing car because we would have our windows down and we'd be singing all the way to school. So it was a different type of music pumping in the in the speakers, but people would always wave, wave at us on the way to school when I was young. So I have some fond memories of music being a really part, big part of my background. Um, and then I had a practice, which I talk about a lot now in all the storytelling that I do, where I'd come home from school, maybe from around age nine, and I would climb a tree in the garden in my where I where I grew up and I would just lay back on the branch and look over the neighborhood. I can just about see a little bit of the coast in the background and hear nature. I mean, this is the Caribbean. We're talking trop the tropics, right? The birds, the sea. And I would just lay back and sing and sing my heart out after school every day. And somehow I guess that became a daily ritual. And that was a real finding of my voice. That was not about how I sounded. It was just for the love of singing and the love of sounding and just feeling super connected with nature and the tree, my tree that's no longer there, but it's still inside of me. And it's such a beautiful memory because I think it's the foundation of everything else. So that journey led on to singing throughout school competitions, things like that. I went to college and I studied languages and sociology and it was the most boring experience I had. Love you community college in Barbados, but the experience for me was just not great. Um, and that was just because it wasn't aligned with what I knew I was here to do. My soul was saying, sing, sing, sing. And I was like, how can I sit and learn French? How can I sit and look, you know? Um, so I left college actually uh, halfway through and uh, much to my parents' surprise and my father's like shock of what? What about your education? Of course. Um, but I knew that my soul's calling was, was there and I knew I had to listen. Something told me the time is now, in including the fact that I was dying inside getting up to go into college every day. Sounds dramatic, but that's how it felt in my, in my being at the time. And then four months after leaving college, I met um, the most incredible mentor musician, Eddie Grant. Some of you will know of him, most of you will, um, who's an incredible musician and still mentor and friend today, who taught me and trained me and my sister and best friend. We were a group together um, in our late teens you know, all about really finding the blend and harmonizing and coming together. He was really let's say compassionately hard on us and that was the best training i ever received in my life so far even though i've trained formally in music since because it was on the ground really getting studio smart as we'd say street smart right and just doing everything i slept music i breathed music i ate everything was music and my journey then led to moving to the uk where i started my studies and went into a professional more of a professional setting in terms of performance i did a lot of performing and recording in the studio in the caribbean i love i love my my music um and then yeah i moved into the contemporary world here in the uk singing teaching working on The Voice, um, UK TV show, doing all sorts of different things. But what I noticed throughout the entire journey of really being in touch with that sound and that song that was coming out of me, that there was always something somewhere in the background that felt there was something more that I wasn't exploring. And I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but every now and then I would get the feedback from people that I worked with, whether those were private students or students or choirs or whoever I worked with, how much the sound and using their voice impacted them. The rewarding effects of using the voice, but also coming together in community and bringing sound out in, in such a collective way. And it kind of sparked one day that there's something more for me to look at. Um, and then last but not least, um, the last, the latter part shifting into the healing aspects, I was in uh, California, I don't know, less, maybe less, just under a decade ago, and I went to a workshop, which was actually this very business joint venture seminar. And I was there to really promote my coaching business and all of this. And I'm really excited and fired up. And just at the end of the seminar, day three of the seminar, this woman said to me, hey, you know, I, I would call it a, a very brief, impromptu psychic reading. Uh, she said, I just feel a call to share something with you. Is that OK? I said, yeah, go for it. And she said, the work that you're doing here is an echo of what you're really meant to be doing. It's like a third echo away, you know, Simone, Simone, Simone. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I mean, I was really fired up and inspired by my work. 
anyway, I took I took it, you know, with a pinch of salt, whatever resonated, resonated. I thanked her, we parted ways, and I went back to the hotel room to get ready for this party, this final party we were having. And as I was in the hotel room, and actually, I don't think I've actually told this story um, live before, so you're getting the, the premiere on your podcast. Um, but yeah, I was in the hotel room and I something told me hit record on my phone and I looked at myself in the mirror as I was getting ready. And as I looked at myself, I saw so deeply into my being, into my soul. I wasn't looking just at the physical reflection of Simone in the mirror. It was so deep. And then my eyes started to well up with tears. And then I started to have what I call this divine download of song. And the lyrics were something along the lines of, how does my sound heal the world? Mm. There is sound and there is voice and somehow I know this is a greater part of me. And it continued for a few minutes. I, I stopped the recording. I, it was amazing. I wiped my tears and I left. And it took me a year to revisit that. And that's when I knew this is the path that I needed to continue along rather than shift along because I use my voice in, in many different ways now. Yeah. Long story short or maybe short story long. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, I have so many things that I want to talk about your story. Thank you, first of all, for sharing. Mm, um, of course. And I think in the in the very beginning, as you started you mentioned a few times your soul, your soul mm. calling. Um, and I think it's always been present. Yes. Even if it wasn't as loud as it is now. Yes. And and I I know you. I you you grew up uh, in a very spiritual family. Your, your mom yes. is yes. my spiritual mentor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mentioned first <laughs> shout out to mama yes Lord. hey your mom <laughs> <laughs> um can you just talk a little bit about that because i feel like your 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 spiritual awakening might be a little bit different to m most people because you had that influence from a very early age yeah sure well there are a lot of things that i notice or I can reflect on now that I noticed from quite young, but didn't quite understand. And one of those is the tree actually being in that tree and being connected. Um, and I bring that, I come back to that story because it's fundamental in having this innate knowing of being connected with nature and source and knowing that we're all vibrational beings, including the tree, including me, and then creating a sonic vibration from me out into that existing vibration around in nature was something that was so profound that I didn't quite understand everything that was happening at the time, but it was my go-to place when I felt like I needed private time, if I needed, if I was felt stressed. I wasn't a stressed child per se, but I had my own moments as every child does. Um, when I needed to think, it was my journaling. It was me being able to converse with myself and the tree and to sing. So I would say that as much as, of course, I was so nurtured and it was very much this, this spiritual background, as you mentioned, um, I was meditating through my mom and the, and the group that she started when I was six, from as young as six years old, in fact. So by the time I got to seven and I think about sitting in the tree at nine, I already had, I know it sounds strange to say nine, but I already had three years of meditation <laughs> practice, right? So at that point, there was already, there was already a connection um to myself to to knowing there was something greater whether i could voice it or not you know um but as i grew older i would say that a lot of my um my intuition started to grow the more i went into silence the more i used my voice there was always something that i could i want to say here and it's still very much very prominent for me today that my intuition is very sonic not surprisingly mm -hmm. um so if I could pinpoint one moment or two moments there, of course, there have been profound moments in my life, including that download in the hotel room in California some years ago. Um, but you're right, there isn't one moment where I will say this is a spiritual awakening. Um, I felt like I came into the world in that environment, in a way, that's what I know. So 
yeah, it's a, it's a hard one to pinpoint, but of course I have so many profound moments that have happened in my life to confirm what feels natural and right for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I say it's a continuous journey. It is. We're always, always expanding. We go through several awakenings. We go deeper and deeper or more and more expanded. Yes. Um, and also I I wanted to to share um how how we met because you were talking about yes. teaching voice and and from from my perspective, you've always had this um holistic approach to to teaching and i i could feel that even if i couldn't necessarily rationalize that but i remember uh when we were in choir uh once and you you taught us to um warm up and sound but with intention mm -hmm. and, and it was just you know it's just such a simple cue but I, I remember and it really stuck with me. And, and I think it's so powerful. Like even yeah. to this day, if I'm going to do a warm up, I remember that. And I, and I, yeah. maybe I set an intention for, for my healing, for he the healing of the world, which is mm -hmm. the same. <laughs> yes, but, yes, you know, exactly. <laughs> um, but it was always there. And so maybe I want to take the, the opportunity since I mentioned the intention yes what is what is the correlation between intention and sound because i i feel like they're very um connected um and and i know in your in your training course which i'm taking by by the way yes um, <laughs> um, about intention but i'd love for you to maybe um share with us you know this connection between setting an intention and sound Yes. So first, an intention. What is that? And I and I like to talk about my take on it because I think obviously there are many views on what intentions are. And some people use in, in setting intentions and setting goals um, synonymously, and that's not the same thing for me. Goals for me is very much um, related to a doing state. You do these things in order to achieve something. And that's a beautiful thing. I love goals. I'm a goal setter. However, the intention for me feels very much like like the being, the being state, how do you want to be in order to achieve these goals? On a deeper level, intention is very much tapping into a space and a source of energy that is always accessible to us. But when we tap into it, we add a bit of direction to what it is that we want to focus on. So when I set intentions, I'm referring to focusing on something that's important that you, you know, you desire, that you truly desire for how you want to show up and how you want to be or how you want others to show up or be. It's all connected. I set the intention to heal this or heal that or heal me or heal us or the world, as you said, all the same. The intention is let's tap into that source of what is already perfect and it's at its essence that allows us to feel healed, that allows us to feel whatever dot, dot, dot our desires are. So intention and sound are beautiful because sound is also frequency and vibration whatever sounds whether it's the voice or any other sounds in the world but when you're using your voice and you're using vibration and you add it to intention it amplifies it one amplifies the other so it's a beautiful cycle um, one of the sound healers jonathan goldman has a formula that i like and we use very much in my teaching which is um, sound plus um, intention or frequency plus intention equals healing. Mm -hmm. So you can have a sound and the sound can have an effect on you, but it may not necessarily offer a healing in a, in a setting, but you add that intention and it completely shifts it because what you're doing, and if you think about it in a visual way, is you're pouring that um, sound into this glass of intention and or pouring this intention into this glass of sound and when it comes together it offers a, a new or a third space where magic can unfold so when i ask people to sound with intention um, in the setting where we were for example a lot of people would say just sing with expression 
And of course, as, as performers, we need to express ourselves. We need to express how we want something to sound. But there is a different level for me when you go to intention than expression, because expression is the outer reflection of the intention that you set. Mm -hmm. And it's just as important, but it ha it starts with the intention. So what is it that you want someone to feel or you to feel when you create a sound? And we do this naturally, right? We create sounds unconsciously without knowing. There's no, there's no like, okay, I'm going to sigh now so that I can re relax, though that's beautiful because conscious um, sighing and conscious intention and all of those things are another conversation or another question perhaps later on. But we might just... Oh, in the body and it does what it needs to do the body naturally goes where it needs to go and sound travels where it needs to go so when you bring that intention it's really just an amplified and magnified force that is at the backdrop of everything that's available to us yeah that's beautiful i, I remember you. when i when I, I i'm doing your training which is more focused on the voice but a while yes. ago i did the training with with the balls and intention was also something that the teacher um emphasized a lot because yes. you can you can play the crystal bowl and it's a beautiful sound but it's also your intention yes when you're, when you're playing that 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 really like you said amplify the mm. journey of that sound that's going to travel through um your body and i think also yeah. the other thing that came to mind is um just just speaking right is is voice traveling yes through. i think a lot of us um might have um had affirmations or might have affirmations and, and they might have heard like the power of affirmations and and, and maybe they wonder why why should i speak this affirmation yes. and why should i speak out loud i mean it's powerful when you think but it's even yes. more powerful when you say the affirmation right and what you explained beautifully i think it reminds us of that of the power of the affirmations as well and speaking yes, yes. you speaking out your desires in with a frequency that's in has the intention of them them becoming true or real or be being manifested in whatever way shape or form it is it is so beautiful yeah that's wonderful so we we already connected your story with the sound healing but um for anybody that might be and you've already mentioned a few things but i'd love for you to share um for anybody that's thinking like how does sound heal which was yes. what you were chanting in that beautiful moment yes yes how, what would you say how would you explain how does sound heal i love that very simple but profound question so what is sound sound basically is um, waves of energy that can be made audible or sonic to the human ear and other ears based on um, the vibration leaving whatever source. That might be through us, our mouths, through striking a bowl, through using other you know, instruments and things like this. And that vibration has a frequency. So just backtracking to science, because I always go here, it's the easiest way for people to understand anyone that did basic, because I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, so much into the science academically, but anyone that did basic physics, you know, at school, we understand that we're all made up of atoms and molecules. So we are, everything is, which is why when we talk about everything is vibration, we are referring to our cells vibrating. We are referring to, you know, this water bottle vibrating, the water inside of it vibrating and it's coming together to form matter as we know it in all different shapes and form and so when you think about it that way then everything has its own unique vibration i have a sonic sound print just the way i have a unique fingerprint that's just mine i also have a unique sound print you have a unique sound print we all have this unique sound print however it's tapped into the collective vibration of this planet and of this um this consciousness that we that we exist within or that it exists within us let's throw it both ways i like that reflection so 
how sound heals is if you think of uh, the body as an instrument when we are in optimum health when we are just vibrant and feeling our best we have a beautiful symphony that is just playing out and everything is in harmony and working so you know it's just amazing it's not something that we might hear maybe some people hear people's sonic um aura i would love to be that be able to do that but we can tell from someone's voice or someone's vibe you know someone walks into a room and you're like i really dig their vibe you don't know why but there's something about the ex the energy expression that doesn't even need to be spoken that you can just sense into and say i like that person right so not about liking or not liking but there's about sensing into this is the point and so when you're in this place of vibrancy your being is vibrating in a healthy harmonious way when we have disease or disease in our bodies or illness there are parts of our energy systems and i'm talking about our um, not just the physical body but what's going on in our energetic map that might have some dissonance dissonance meaning not having all the harmony and not always working well together feeling misaligned and when that's happening it sometimes manifests physically but sometimes it manifests emotionally sometimes it manifests mentally these are the different energetic maps and bodies that we have access to so how sound heals is it's just thinking if we're instruments and we're out of tune then there's certain sounds and frequencies that can help tune us up can help get us back into tune by so getting us back into harmony and balance and healing, offering a space for healing to take place. Yeah, I love this analogy uh, because it makes it so simple and palpable. And um, yeah. I think you mentioned it was in our training. Um, you, you were talking about this analogy and you mentioned something along the lines of the, the guitar will, will be out of tune regardless of whether you play it or not. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, it will be out of tune regardless if you play it or not. The context of that, just to kind of bring it into context, is if you think that you, that you will always be in harmony or you will always feel good or you will always feel vibrant, I think then that is something that we all know isn't true. That might be the goal, the aim, the intention, but life happens and we're not always in a position where we're our most vibrant. And so the guitar analogy is simply that a guitar might go out of tune depending on the temperatures in the room, um, whether you tune it, uh, how often you play it, you know, are you, how often you're using your capo, okay? So all these, these analogies that you can pull in, it can affect it but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing. It's just part of the instrument going through growth and changes and creating different sounds. And sometimes you might go, ooh, this is slightly out of tune, but I like the way this sounds, mm -hmm. right? And bringing that back into um, a practical healing setting, when we're going through healing, it's not always a blatant, uh, 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 obvious thing. Sometimes it's subtle and we're just slightly out of tune. And all it takes is a little nudge to get us back into tune and feel vibrant again, as opposed to it always being something massive. But there's so many ways that we can get back into harmony and be grounded and vibrant with sound and other ways, of course. But sound is definitely my go to because one thing we all have access to majority of us in the world is the sound of our voice. Yeah. Or the sound of others voices. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. I think the, the the balance, like you said, it's is something that most of us aim, but we forget the balance means up and down and the yes. of, of 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 life and and, and not fifty fifty, right? Yeah, and I think yeah. sometimes the the dissonance, or we could say the 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 low area or even a, a a little disease or something it actually is just a sign saying you need some time to rest um and yes. you know let's recalibrate let's bring yourself back into into harmony and and it's a constant um uh healing journey of finding that harmony within you and in your heart but 
like you said, if you have the tools, then yes. you can optimize your your harmony. <laughs> or, yeah, or, exactly. Know. Yes, harmonize, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love, yes. love, love this analogy. And um, so when it comes to, to sound healing, and I think most people um it's a i think it's a great thing that it's becoming more i want to say mainstream but it's yeah. it's becoming more and more known uh yes. you know there are there are sound baths and and gong baths which i love you know it's mm. amazing it feels great um but you you do a lot of work with the voice i yes. think that's what sets you apart because you you might use some instruments as well in your sessions in your in your group sessions but your main focus is your voice and your and you help us to to access that power in yeah. our voice as well so yes. can you maybe uh tell us like if there is a difference between using instruments and using your voice and and for anybody who might be completely new and they might be thinking wow yeah that's so obvious like voice can heal and voice is healing but if they're completely new to that aspect of sound healing what would you say yeah i would say that all aspects of sound healing first and foremost are powerful in their own way whether it's gong crystal bowls there's just there're just so many different options um, but what I would say is that we are not born with a gong coming out with our, you know, coming out of our mothers or a crystal bowl or any of those things. We learn to connect with that vibration and that instrument, but we are born with our voices. And so that is something for me that I like to call the original instrument, right? So like anything, we have an, an instrument and then we can learn to play many other instruments and be multi-instrumentalists. What the voice offers is on a very practical level, you can take it anywhere. Well, that's one. Because it's very deeply rooted in our expression, in our own unique sound print and the way we um, you know, express ourselves into the world, it's also an opportunity for it to be a vulnerable place for us, but also inviting that vulnerability and openness in others. Mm -hmm. And so what for me, obviously, it was a very practical and easy choice to go into the, the, the sound healing with the voice because my background is as a singer and, and I knew my voice was a big part of the role. I think for every, anyone who's like, OK, well, which one should I choose? I think that you have to follow your intuition and your and, and trust that. What I think the voice offers is, and I get this feedback all the time from my voice baths, I call them voice baths for that reason rather than sound baths, is that it's so personal and intimate and it touches people in a way that's very different to a gong, to a crystal bowl, to these things, but they're all beautiful instruments. So I wouldn't say one is better than the other, I would just call the voice the original instrument. And then again, you have a choice to become a multi-instrumentalist. Yeah. 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 I have two questions um, from this. Um, and it is just going back a little bit because you mentioned about the energetic bodies. Um, yes. For me personally, and I, and I think for, for a lot of people too, um, going into a sound bath, whether it's with instruments or a voice um, bath, yeah. it makes me feel very emotional. It it touches on the the emotional my emotional body, um, and sometimes mm -hmm. it even lingers on for like a whole week. Um, I am usually in touch with my emotions, but it's it just you just feel more in touch. It seems like you, I feel more connected mm -hmm. with my emotional body is is there an explanation for this or is it just me 
everyone's experience is unique. You know, I think you are in touch with your emotions. You feel okay to feel your emotions. And if there are any, if there's anything that needs to move in that experience, like I said, sound goes where it needs to. So you feeling emotional is just could be a release. It could be that you were holding some emotions and that the energy has helped them to shift and move. And that represents itself through you feeling emotional. There's some people that don't feel emotional at all. They just feel deeply relaxed and get up and go home and continue with whatever else. And so I do think it's not just you. It's probably, I would, I would venture the majority of people, but also every experience again is what you need. So if I say again that sound travels where it needs to, you needed that shift or that emotional connection and others might just need to let go and relax. Yeah. So that that's kind of the, the frame I like to put on it. It is a unique experience. Yeah. yeah. And I think going back to the intention too, right? Um, if you set the intention to be more in touch with your emotions, I think that's yes. really going to bring up more emotions. Um, and the other thing that I feel too, whenever I'm in a sound bath or um, a voice bath, um, I feel like it enhances my psychic abilities as well. And I remember mm. um, the first time that we had our, our session um, and it, it was very clear the visions that I was getting was very clear the 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 the, the messages so it was more like clairvoyant clairaudient but I mm -hmm. remember that being in that environment with sound your voice and instruments just made me more psychic too and perhaps it could be because that was my intention even if it was a subconscious intention because yes. i was you know practicing uh meditating and, and and channeling but would would you say that sound also helps um for anybody who might be interested in channeling or or just enhancing their psychic abilities would you say that sound helps in that I think you kind of answered your question, uh, which is if you set the intention and it's for your highest good, then the answer is yes. You know, I think that it's not that sound particularly, you know, makes you more psychically aware, but it can do that. And for me in the work that I do, the deeper I go into this work, the more I have available to me. And that's because there's an intention to go very deep into myself, into my intuition, to also develop a really strong relationship with my guides, ancestors or angels or whatever words might feel right for you, whatever you feel supported with or by. And all of that happens through my constant practice, my training, my teaching, my clients. So in a way, for me, it does that. Um, though I don't um, start every session with, I, well, my intention is to be more psychically aware. I just know that as long as I can relax enough and get out of my own head, then things happen the way they're meant to. So the way I will look at it is that often what sound does is it allows people to get out of their head a little bit and get out of their get out of the way a little bit more um, so that whatever needs to unfold, whatever magic and transformation needs to unfold, it can. You've created the environment for your highest good to take place. And for you, you whether you set the intention to be more connected to your psychic ability or awareness, you may not, as you said, have done that consciously but with the journey and the practice and the environment that you already kind of preset up it was just offering a space for you to let go more and get out the way more for things to come in and maybe that's what you needed again it's such a personal thing there's no kind of this does this it does that but also it does all of that yeah yeah and i think in general people would probably use the word intuition like mm -hmm. they might have that sense that when they're in the sound bath where they're experiencing sound their intuition might get a yes. little more um active or enhanced yeah sure i mean i have people come sometimes to voice baths with a very clear-cut question and it's almost like they're they're using the experiences to give them the clarity of a yes or a no or whatever clarity they might be looking for. And then sometimes someone will just come and go, I have some pain in my leg and or my back and I just need to release that. You know, just everyone has a different um, need or yeah. want or desire. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's one of the things that I, I say to when I facilitate um, the breath work, 
um, sessions, whether it's with group or one-on-one, um, we set the intention, but also sometimes you have a question in your mind or an intention, and then what comes up during the session is something else. Yeah. Yes, um, because like you said, sound travels through your body. It needs to. Very needs to go, and you're thinking with your conscious mind that this is a question that you have. But then, if you just go a little deeper, if you surrender to that moment to that practice, something else might come up. Yeah, exactly. So I want to actually take the chance that we're talking about um, client experiences and ask, um, what is um, what is a session with you like? Because because mm-hmm. um, I remember when I when I did it, I also I think it was my first. Maybe I had gone to like a gong bath before, but it was my first one hundred and one sound healing. And yeah. I've already mentioned that you know it was very emotional. I I was able to clear to see um, visions very clearly, and obviously mm. because we have this beautiful love um bond yes bond it was super special um but i'd love for you to share a little bit what is what is a session like a sound session with the voice with you like yes i'll say with me because obviously there is a again there are a few things that will be their commonalities. So really sound healing happens where a client will either sit comfortably, lay down comfortably on a couch or a mat that can be both in person and or um, virtually, and they just receive sound into the body. We speak a little bit about what their intention is, and then we set and open that intention for the highest good. Those things unknown, known, unknown, seen, unseen, heard, unheard, that the soul knows and the rest of it just, the rest of us just needs to catch up. One of my favorite sayings from my mom and so we we do that and then I just sound both using the science and understanding of how certain vowels certain frequencies certain notes can help but also very much the intuitive part that says go here and spend more time here and do this a little bit more here and then you just go into that feedback loop between what's happening energetically what the client is feeling and sensing and then your also intuition guides you as to what is needed and then that is literally happens over an hour and you you chat with the client at the end and just sense and ask them how it felt what came up for them and then you can also share what came up for you knowing that some of it will resonate some of it will not at least not in that moment and that's absolutely fine um so it's really straightforward most sessions are an hour i mean i'm sure sound healers work in different ways but for me an hour is ample time to give people enough sound and 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 um grounding for them to receive and integrate as they go on with the rest of whatever else is next in in the day for them And I think it's uh, it's important to re- remind people too that one can go into a sound healing session to heal a physical ailment yes. that may yeah. have, or it can be something more subtle, emotional, spiritual. Even though we know that it's, they're all interlinked, <laughs> yeah, it's all yeah. the same, right? It's all connected, and um, if it's a physical ailment, it's probably a somatized. Yes, and very often people come with physical things and then what comes up is something emotional or they come with something emotional and then they're feeling some physical discomfort as it clears. So like you said, it's all interlinked. We can't separate the body from the mind, from the emotions, from the spirit. And we can't really do that because we're all of that, right? Um, so I, what I love though about sci- um, these sessions is I use the word magic a few times because sometimes it's not something that you can quite explain but I trust my intuition that much that I don't question whether it makes sense or not because it's not logical, right? It's not a thinking thing. It's a sensing and 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 um, inner awareness thing. And I remembered working with a client, if, if I can share a story because it kind of is a bit relevant to what you're saying, who came to me and um, she had a lot of pain in her back, her lower back. I, she said, I've been to physio, I've been to chiropractor, I've done all this stuff and it's just, just still chronic, it's not going away. 
is there anything you can do sure let's give it a go my intention was to help her release the pain in her lower back as i'm sounding over her lower back all the time i can just hear father 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 and i'm like okay father's coming up but i don't know we'll just see i continue i do everything and then she sits up and she feels a little bit better and then i said to her okay so physically it feels a bit better this is what you want to do do you know how to how to let this integrate take your time and i gave her a few bits of homework which i also give clients to go away and continue with the integration and i said um would you like me to share what came through for me and she said yes please and i said well what is your relationship like with your father and she burst into a flood of tears she was a daddy's girl and she lost her dad maybe five years ago to i don't cancer and illness and bless um she just missed him so much but she didn't let herself grieve enough throughout through the experience so what it felt like for me and what was coming up for me was like okay so she was holding on to a lot of the grief in her back and then she went on to tell me the story that at her dad's funeral she was one of the pallbearers and when she was holding the casket her back gave out so not only did she have a physical um, reaction to it in the moment, his loss, but she carried that physical pain and the grief in her back for five years. And as soon as we could go deeper than just the physical, because that's that sometimes it's something that can be worked through and people don't go into what it means. It's just, oh, I feel better. Thanks. But for her, as soon as, um, not that she needed my permission, but I'll phrase it this way, as soon as she had permission to grieve and let go, and we really worked together for some time, she started to feel her back release the pain that was going on for a really long time and nothing else seemed to be working. And all I did was use my voice, intention, called on support and sounded into directly around the lower back for about seven minutes maximum mm -hmm. and that's all that we did in that first session as we continued the journey together yeah yeah beautiful thanks for sharing yes uh, i think there's something that you did to uh at the end as you shared what came through you 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 brought that into her awareness you brought that fact into her awareness which then um made her release right because maybe like yes. you said like some people they they're just looking at the the physical part of it but then once you just give that little poke yeah maybe it could be related to this and that that comes into awareness and that sure um, mm -hmm. helps the the release and i think that's related to sound too but, but but you said like she she cried it out you know she yeah she had the moment to sound it out sound yeah. it out and feel the grief but and and just sound it out and i and i relate very much to to that story because mm. you no know, my, my father passed away when i was when i was eight and in in the funeral i remember just letting a cry out that was super loud um but it was only when i did my first breath work session that i was able to release it was like there was a lump here and i released that that yeah. scream or that cry yes. um, so that's what that's why i always encourage people to sound out it doesn't matter if it sounds pretty it probably yeah. won't sound pretty because if yes. it's a painful thing it's gonna be screamy it's gonna be sound sound like a cry and and i do think that most of us we've been maybe conditioned to suppress the sound yeah. you know especially i guess boys but not specifically you know like don't cry of course. Um, yes you know just be a good girl you know everybody i think can relate to this and so and then we we become adults and we're like afraid to even make a sound and mm. make fools of ourselves right yeah. and so talk us uh, talk to us a little bit about the person making the sound and how this can heal and and i love 
to that you you guide us into making sounds very simple sounds and just becoming familiar with your own sound and not and not be so self-conscious about it yeah so, or judgmental yeah for sure can you tell us a little bit about that it's the person sounding and and also well overcoming yeah consciousness this it's it's so important i think we again we use this these things in in language all the time and we we all have different senses that we're a little bit more connected to because i'm quite a sonic creature i'm often like okay i'm just gonna sound that out a bit even if it's just a decision i need to make that's nothing to do with sound and voice i'm like gotta sound that out or sleep on it so i'm very kinesthetic and i'm very you know my my auditory in my way of of accessing information within myself um but sounding out so one of the sessions that we do for example um with clients who have pain in their body is to actually get them to sound out the pain so as you said pain doesn't necessarily have this pretty beautiful harmonious sound because as i mentioned earlier if you're out of tune there might be some dissonance sometimes it's a groan a grunt a hiss Sometimes it's loud, sometimes it's quiet. We don't judge what wants to come out, but by them sounding out that discomfort, that pain, that dissonance, it allows them to take responsibility for their own release, control of their own release, and it offers them something that they can continue to do. When that's released and they feel like they've allowed that to, to, to be, you know, to let go of it, then we can look at sounding in some harmonious sounds, things that feel more like a soothing balm, where we just emptied out, what are we refilling our beings with? And that's the session actually sounding out pain in from the body that we do and you'll be learning that uh, the nearer to the end of, of our training because it's such a powerful thing but sometimes it's just getting people to sound out how they feel i used to teach a lot of workshops actually about emotions and i speak about it because when you think about our emotions they have their own sound or song they have their own way of being. Like, if I'm really excited, I'm gonna go all the way up here and I'm gonna get really fast and ah! So can't wait to share it with you. And then equally, if I'm sad, my tone probably drops a bit and the breathing pattern changes and maybe I'm a bit slower in the way I'm expressing myself. Now, I don't think any of us were taught to do this in school. Remember, when you're excited, go higher and blah, 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 blah. And when you're sad, right? Oh, we you, all have... You let that sigh out. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so sighing, one of my favorite things. Um, and so all of that to say, these are things, again, that are innate. We weren't taught to do this. I'm sure there's some influences, of course, like any conditioning, cultural influences and so on, that maybe someone from this part of the world might make a different sound to this part of the world. But generally, we all, we don't, it's the point is it's, it's something that we do innately it's it's natural we don't think about it but we already do these things so i think what sound and sound healing and all of this really is doing is bringing it into as you mentioned the word awareness into our conscious awareness not everyone's going to develop a sounding practice but there's everyone's going to sigh at some point yeah. or go oh my gosh i don't want this anymore at some point or oh or whatever it might be or mm right the sounds of pleasure the sounds of pain whatever we have all these sounds available to us but developing something that's conscious allows us to nurture the nature and that's such a beautiful way of developing overall that inner awareness so that we have the responsibility and take the responsibility knowing that it's ours to change our states to heal ourselves because as healers sound healers anyone that calls himself a healer they aren't the ones doing the healing what they're doing is allowing the person to heal themselves by creating the best environment to get back into tune Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right creating the sounds and the vibrations that allows the body the mind the spirit the emotions to naturally get back into tune so my role as a sound healer is as a catalyst for you to do the work yourself and i really think that's an important thing to mention because a lot of people think oh i'm going to go and get healed no it's i'm going to go and heal myself with the support of yeah yeah that's yeah. why I think it's so it's so powerful when when people learn how to sound um, themselves and and just yes. express whatever you know emotions um, 
And so for anybody who is listening or watching and they're thinking, okay, I, I, I get it. I can use my voice for healing to bring myself back into harmony, yeah. but I'm still like self-conscious. I don't like to hear my voice. I mean, that's not, if you're a singer, then you're pr probably pretty okay listening to your own voice or, or, or sounding, although not necessarily, but no, we are not used to, to singing different intentions. So I think that's one thing that singers can do is just to add yeah. that intention factor. But like in general, um, someone is self-conscious of their voices and, and you know, they're just kind of locked and stuck they can't make sounds or even even the sound of their speaking voice might be a little shy mm. uh, what would be maybe one exercise or just a perspective shift that they can do to start their journey in sounding out and and using that instrument as a healing tool because we've established yeah. that it is. Yes. I think the very first thing is, and by the way, a lot of singers find it hard to be heard, even though they don't mind their singing and they feel comfortable with their own voices. I can tell you the amount of students that would say, my neighbor, I don't want my neighbors to hear me warming up, you know, or my whoever lived, my flatmates to hear me doing lip bubbles and tongue trills, whatever it might be. So there can be really self-conscious too, because as you said, it's different. Now, sounding, the, the, the first thing for me would be to get people to go to the sounds that they notice first, the sounds that they already make, because we are all sounding all the time. So all you start with is an awareness of what are the sounds that I already make. And then when you start to notice, you realize that reframe of, oh, I'm already quite sonic. Okay, well, what if I made this sound intentionally? And I love to go to the sigh, which we spoke about, because the sigh is one of the most natural ways of connecting breath and sound to the body. But it also is something that relieves stress. So it's a win-win. You're like, okay, I don't want to be stressed out about singing or hearing my voice or sounding or whatever. <sighs> Just that. Just that sigh that allows the sound and air to connect with the body. And also what it allows you to do is to expand. And this is not just expand physically, but expand energetically. And when people are feeling shy, um, just judging themselves, not wanting to do things, there's often a contraction. You were doing it with your body, actually, as you were describing someone who's not really wanting to share their voice, so there's a contraction. So the sigh offers an opening and an expansion, a connection to sound and breath to the body. There's so many beautiful things in just that one sound. So my first thing would be noticing the sounds that you already make. Like I know if someone brings me, I love mangoes, I'm from, I love a tropical woman, and you bring me a beautiful mango, it's just come out the fridge because I like it cold, and you put it in front of me on a plate perfectly sliced and ready for me to bite into, I'm like, mmm, no one's telling me to make that sound, my body just goes, yeah, mmm, pleasure, the sounds of pleasure, we don't get taught those sounds, we have them all accessible, so what are the sounds that you make, and then either come, go straight into making some of them consciously or just go to the sigh. <sighs> and when you sigh, attach some sound to it, not <sighs> but <sighs> and you don't have to pitch it. You don't have to try to do anything. You're just going to sigh and allow your body to release, let go and sound. And then that's the starting point of what next? Yeah, yeah, I love it. We both love the simple Task, yes right? the simple path. yeah the ones you can do <laughs> yeah, like just go and do that and come back yeah like you said just just bring awareness to what the sounds you make or you don't mm. make right um or even like other people's sounds because sometimes it's like oh wow yeah i do that all the time you notice your yourself or the reflection through somebody else yeah sounds uh, in the environment as well that Perhaps you, you've never noticed, but they're always there, right? Uh, this yeah. is actually one of the, 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 the practices that I suggest um, in, in the multidimensional self program. The seventh dimension is all about frequencies and sounds, everything that yeah. you talk yeah. about. Um, and so this is 
Great. I, and I, one thing that came to mind too is uh, there there are people that might be on the other side of the spectrum too, in the sense mm-hmm. that they maybe make a lot of sounds and they might feel um, maybe even uncomfortable with silence um, yeah. or they may need to practice listening more than speaking, which is also related to sound, yes. right? The silence yeah. listening is also very related, right? Yeah, I mean, sound and silence are are the same. The others, there's you know, two sides of the same coin. You can't have one without the other. You know, we know this in music. If everything was one sound all the way through and there was never a pause, or or some silence or something, it would it would be very. It wouldn't be something that would be pleasant to listen to. Let's say, what I would say though is um, often especially in a a sound healing context, the magic healing and integration happens in the silence. The sound allows the body to make the shifts, the energy to make the shifts, and the silence helps to integrate it so that all of the things that you've sounded can integrate into the energy. And so silence is not the most important, but just as important as sound in a sound healing session and it's just as important i will go as far as saying a generalized in life as sounding and talking and speaking it's just as important to to be quiet and not make sounds and not have all the sounds in your environment where possible um and that's that's a beautiful thing to to note for sure yeah and i think it's something that we're we're lacking. I mean, especially if you live in a in a big city, you know, there's sounds yeah. all the time, uh, and we're not used to the s- sound of silence. No, I, I remember when I went to Peru. We went to this very rural um, place, and for like a few seconds, like the, there was no. I mean, there was always sound, as we know, yeah. it, it's vibrating, but to my physical ears, there was no sound. And that was just so foreign to me that I wanted to just freeze in that moment for, you know, for Mm. a while. Um, Simone. Yes. I have more questions. We can talk about things for hours and hours. (laughs) And we do, don't we? Just not on camera. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) we could publish some of our conversations. It's true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I want to finish um, with some fun and deep questions that I mm. my guests okay. uh, maybe in the future can come back to and we can talk more about um, sound sure. and all this beautiful, juicy stuff. Mm. So these questions are simple and whatever comes to your mind, you can just. Okay. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> So what is your definition of healing? Healing is coming back to the true essence of who we truly are. Hmm. Beautiful. Uh, What's the future of sound healing in your opinion? Sound healing is medicine. It's the medicine of the future and it's actually the medicine of now too, but we're just catching up. Yeah. Um, what is you asked me this question, so I want to ask you too. Uh, what is your favorite sound? Hmm. I will have to go with the sigh. <sighs> Maybe it's the feeling too, but that's just that sound for me is just so potent. So yeah, I'll say the sigh. So hypothetical question, imagine that all the books in the world were going to be destroyed and deleted forever. If you had to save one, which book would it would you save? And perhaps why? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't think that's a quick fire question for me. It's different. Um, (laughs) So I'm going to be a bit of a rebel. And I would say I wouldn't save any. 
because I think that if all the books were destroyed, that there would be some other way of being able to have all of that information, amazing information and energy and consciousness shared through physical copies of books available to us in another way. And I would just tap into that instead. Boom. <laughs> well, since we're talking about sound and music, I'll ask you the same question. Maybe you have the same answer, but imagine that all the songs in the world were going to be destroyed. And yeah, destroyed. no, I can't answer. It's the same. It's the same answer. I, I I love too many songs and too many music to too many songs and too many types of music to pick one. Um, but I, an answer would be whatever song really stirs my soul at that time. Because right now there's so many, and maybe at that time, whatever's stirring my soul, I will go, that's the one I need to keep because that's what's stirring me right now. But yeah. that's not across time and space, maybe being more present. <laughs> yeah. And going back to your answer, you can also make your own song, right? Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, what is the one thing about you that people might be surprised to know? Well, I don't know. I don't have anything that's so massive. I will say two things that came to mind. Um, one is that I go by my middle name, Simone, and it's not my first name. So people might be surprised because most people these days, not everyone, some people know me by Melanie, which is my first name. So people be like, oh, I never knew. I was um, so that's, that. that was probably one. Um, and then the second one, maybe how much I love popcorn. <laughs> Love you know popcorn too. Love popcorn <laughs> and, I and i was very surprised when i when i learned your first name was melanie but at the same yes. time like that makes sense because it's one of my favorite female names oh, there you go <laughs> um so let's suppose that we sign contracts before incarnating and coming to this life and then we choose what we came here to learn and also what we came here to teach. Yes. What do you think this would be for you in this lifetime as Simone or Melanie Simone? <laughs> what I came to learn and teach? Yes. Well, I will start with teach because that for me is definitely to um, be able to teach love, compassion and healing through sound. Mm -hmm. um, to learn in a way, pointing it to myself, probably the same love, love for myself, self love, um, self worth, s compassion and healing mm -hmm. um, across my experiences, because those are the things that help me grow the most when I can reflect and love myself just that little bit more or a lot more, recognize the worthiness that's here and within me, and let that be reflected out, be compassionate with myself, which is tied up in the self love and healing. Because again, as you said at the beginning, healing me is healing the world. Yeah, yeah. And I usually find it that people say what you said, like, I think it's the same what I came yeah, here to, isn't it interesting? What I came here to teach. Yeah, I often find that to be the case. Yeah. Final question. I borrowed this from Lewis Howe is that you, okay. you and I both love and it's called yeah. three truths. So imagine yeah. that many years from now, you're about to make the transition from this physical realm into the spiritual realm and all of your books, all of your podcasts, all of your music, everything is going to be deleted and you yeah. have a piece of paper, a pen, and you can write your three truths. And that's, that's your message to humanity. That's what, that's what's going to live on from you. What would be your three truths? <sighs> I would have to say, and I didn't know you were going to ask me this. So that's lovely. I love that it's coming up. Um, I would say that I am loved that I loved and that I am love. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Yeah. And that Thank can you. totally um, empower people to feel that they are love too. They are, you are loved. You love people, you love others and you are love. Absolutely. 
Well, I want to finish with that, but before I actually want to <laughs> ask you, um, how can people connect with you? And if you have any mm. projects in the pipeline that you would like to share, I, I've already mentioned that I'm doing your, your training, which is yes, one yes. I highly recommend, even though I haven't finished yet, but I totally recommend. Thank you. Thank so, you so much. Uh, how can people, um, join us um yeah they can find me online my website simone niles.com um and i'm across most um, social media platforms instagram facebook and so on so um if you google simone niles or you go to simone niles.com all the information's there the sound healing training is an amazing one i recommend anyone that feels called to use sound in a healing and therapeutic uh way to jump on board i'd love to have you um that's all on my website i also have a membership where i have people come in and and receive healing sounds on a monthly basis i have um, compositions that i create for healing and transformation and also you get access to me monthly where we can have a wonderful interaction and answer questions about all these lovely things that we've been talking about today so those are the two things that are um, available right now and of course there's always future projects and things that i have in the pipeline but everything will always be in those places starting with my website yeah and I'll put all the links in the description as always. I think it's uh, also important to remember that your training course is not necessarily just for those who want to become sound healers, right? It can exactly. If you just want to expand your knowledge and practice. Yeah, or go through your own healing and transformation by learning through that journey. There's It always happens. Some people aren't wanting to go out there and be practicing sound healers, but they want the information and the knowledge for their own healing and their community, their family, whatever. It, it doesn't really matter who and how. It At this stage, it really starts with the desire and the calling to do something. And I, and I trust that the people who are meant to find me will. Yeah, yeah yeah thank you thank you thank you simone thank you so much to acknowledge you for um being so grounded in who you are and showing up as your most authentic self because that helps us um mm -hmm. to be our most authentic self and i want to thank you for being a light in this world be my friend um for your support um i actually i want to read you something that i saw just before our interview and it reminded me of you it was a synchronicity or a coincidence we know that there's no coincidence but i saw this on instagram and it doesn't say who wrote this quote but the quote says be the light that brightens someone's world that makes a heart smile and sing that heals and uplifts a wounded soul and when i read that it, it reminded me of you because i think that you are that for me thank you that's so beautiful thank you so much for that reflection and i know that you're reflecting it because it's also in you and I'm so grateful for you, your love, friendship and support all these years. And I can't wait to see how things unfold. I'm just so excited. Thanks for having me on your amazing podcast. You. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Gosh, love. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for watching or listening to this episode. If you would like to learn more about Simone's work, you can visit her website www.simoneniles.com and follow her on Instagram as well at Simone underline Niles. You can find the links in the show's notes as well. And once again, if this has brought you value, please subscribe to my channel and share it with that one friend who loves sound healing or is very interested in learning more about frequencies and vibrations. And as always, keep shining your light, keep your heart open and let love lead the way. I love you. See you in the next episode. Bye.